now I'd love to hear a little bit about your job as the musical director for Enrique. Like, mm -hmm. tell me, like, what is what is your responsibilities and um, how do how do how does your, yourself as a drummer work into that? From my experience in watching other MDs, I think that the term MDs has become pretty vague. I think it depends depending on who you're working for. If you end up uh, the, my first official MD job was was working with Nane. I was a German pop star and. And uh, 99 yeah. um, it just just by default, I ended up, you know, she wanted, she needed other talent. I started hiring people, and um, and then I started working on her arrangements with her, and I kind of had a chemistry with her, and and then she goes, yeah, so you're the MD, and I'm like, oh, I am, okay, I right. I didn't really think about it. Um, so uh, in the case of Enrique's job. Um, a friend of mine was MDing it who hired me, and he moved on to work, to work with Rihanna and do some other stuff. And um, anyway, to make a long story short, he Enrique was in need of an MD, and um, Enrique's a guy he he really likes to have his people. He doesn't like a bunch of new faces coming in all of, for every tour. He likes to have his band, and it's still all about him. He's the artist and all that stuff, but. I think it made sense for him because his last MD left to uh, find someone to, that knows the chemistry of his band already. I had been playing drums with him for, I don't know how many, five or six years before he asked me to take over his MD. So um, now in the case of Enrique, I actually share the creative process So with a producer of his, Carlos Bacar, who works on his records, tracks all his vocals, and he also comes on the road with us. Um, so for me, it's a combination of hiring talent and thinking about new ideas, making the arrangements for the show, and you know, working the songs up from the recorded version to what's going to work live. Um, you know, a lot of records these days are recorded with DJs, programmers, which I'm also completely open-minded to in that that whole side of the music world. But um, Enrique's show is not him and a guy with a laptop sitting there. That's not what he's looking for. So, um, so there's always going to be a band involved, and um, that's pretty much what it is, you know. And then, usually, de dealing with personal issues from time to time. Oh, so you become kind of HR too? Um, well, it's my job. It's my job that he has a band that he loves and he's comfortable with, and. He doesn't have time to deal with, you know, if somebody has a hangnail and doesn't feel like playing that day. <laughs> right, right. Um, yeah, so I guess like anyone in any business, you know, I, I look for people that are motivated to do this kind of thing in the long run, not just the best musician or, um, you know, somebody who's, I'm looking at what they're after. If it's someone who's incredibly talented and they're look, talking to every different record label and they want to get their own solo thing happen, and I'm like, uh, that might be, a, that might not be the best person for this family right now. So uh, try to keep all that stuff in mind. I think that's probably the case in any business. So, so. you know, it's interesting you touch on that because um, I know a lot of like young players when they get into the industry, they think that they have to be the best player, you know, in in the country or in the world in order to be able to land a gig. And from my experience, what I've seen working, you know, with a lot of different productions, it's not necessarily about being the best player, but more rather, I guess, being able to work very easily with people. Yeah. How do you, do you run into a lot of like, very many personality issues with? Um, well, not in Enrique's band, because I, um, if there's one advantage to growing a little bit older, I feel like I have a, a sharper sense of who a person is maybe a little bit faster than I used to when I was in my 20s. You know, I might be a little kind of arrogant myself back then. And <laughs> um, But um, yeah, I, I want to find the right person because we are, we're not sharing rooms, but we're out there living together and it's the impact of a live show when you're with people like you love. That might sound as corny as it might sound. It, is, it, it dominates, you know, it dominates people who who aren't happy there, you know. I mean, they can be throwing shapes and pretending they're having a good time, but as far as the energy of having a family, like, that feels like a family. And Nain is, Nain is very much that way as well. 
she doesn't like people in and it coming in and out. And, um, so, yeah, it's it's half of it, and then knowing that someone can take care of the little details like not forgetting their passport and stuff like that. <laughs> I mean, Rick has a tour manager and management all for that stuff, but if if there's a problem with a band member, though, you know. <laughs> They, they, look, they look to you. Yeah, my phone's going to be right <laughs> Dude, man, thanks again for coming out today. You got it, man. It's awesome. Thanks for having me. Oh, no problem. Long overdue. I know, I know.